Happy Monday and welcome back to a special edition of Upper Michigan Today. We're live in Ironwood at the Stormy Cromer factory taking a look at how the iconic caps get made and we are starting from the very beginning of the process. So we're back with Bob and Gina to see where it all gets started. So these caps, they've been uh, the same since 1903 when the brand <laughs> got started, uh, like you were telling us in the last segment, but you've got a piece of paper in your hand and is this the pattern that's going to be printed yeah, this, bob you say this, this part cutting, fascinates people yeah this is the cutting lathe where we're, we're starting to build hats here so if you look really closely there are a bunch of triangles which are one sixth of the segment of the hat and then maybe you can see if the camera picks it up really well you can see the brims being cut mm -hmm. the, ear, the ear flaps yeah they look like brims and so that's that's what this is the ear flaps will get cut on the next on the next lathe okay most cutting of fabric is done with multiple plies so if you look up in the corner this is 12, there's going to be 12 layers cut at the same time. Oh wow! And so we're going to we're going to, we're going to watch the process. The fabric came from the warehouse down into the under the cutting table. It got laid up into this mm. section that's uh, according to this is uh, three yards. It's basically nine feet long, mm -hmm. and and then there's 12 layers of it. So we're going to watch the process now. All right. How many hats are going to be made I was from just this? Just that. So somewhere around, well, let's see, there's two or three. Well, I see a number, the highest number right here is no, the, 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 Oh, that's no, not the, it? Yeah, it's, these are, the, actually those sizes. sizes. Oh, the sizes. So we're, cutting, we're crossing, cutting multiple sizes in one. Um, and I, I just want to add this, because when I give a tour, uh -huh. and I, I'm thinking your listeners will like this, if any of you out there have a cricket for, like, crafting yes. vinyl, this is like a gigantic cricket, so okay. it's kind of like that context uh -huh. helps people. Who okay. doesn't love a cricket exactly. these days? Everybody right. loves a cricket. Yeah. Okay, so should we turn it on and fire it up? We'll turn it on and fire it up, okay. yes. Okay, and you're going to talk us through what's happening? Absolutely, okay. yes. All right, fire her up! The <laughs> square and the bleed. All right, we hear, we hear the fan going, so vacuum. The, so the vacuum is sucking the fabric down on the table. Right now, the, the machine does not know where the fabric is. So Chris is telling the machine with the fabric. If you see the electric eye, she's telling the machine where the fabric is right now. Okay. She's going to draw a giant right triangle on there. There's a mouse pad in her hand, if you see it there. She's telling the machine it's going to draw a giant right triangle. Come up here. See, it's off now, so she's got to adjust that. She's got to move it over now and draw it again because she can't be off. She doesn't have a lot of fabric to play with, so it's got to be very precise. And of course, no pressure doing it live on TV, hey? <laughs> yep, yep. There, now that, no, it's, no, it's right. Now she should hit the line here. So now she's got fabric here. Okay. And it's ready to go. So now it's going to start cutting. It's cutting out triangles. Now those triangles that you saw are there. Yeah. And I've got a great explanation tool here that. Where'd the camera go? Hey, Robert. It's over there. So he can't hear us. We can do that. Robert! <laughs> you can have fun doing that. All right. So you have this block in your hand. So if you look really closely, here's the table. There's the table. This is the table. Inside that turret up there is a blade that's stabbing the fabric and going like this really fast. Yeah. You just can't see that. That's what's going on. It's just cutting like a saw, like a wood saw does. It's got no teeth on it it's like a razor blade if you can see and every time it goes click click it sharpens itself you'll hear it click and, and make a clicking noise and it's it just ran a sharpening tool down if you look really close at the blade it's got these sharpening marks on it and so and that's what it's doing and one of the things i'm very proud of is this software that's running this cut all the clothing we we're wearing everybody that's watching the fabric was cut with optitex we get um, interns from Central Michigan University, University of Wisconsin Stout, and the University of Minneapolis, Minnesota, Minneapolis. They all use this software. This company called me about eight years ago and said, we'd like to interview your people from the UP. We brought in nobody to help us. We think you're one of the best users of our software in the world. And we're very, very proud of that. We, we figured out how to, we cut more variety than any other sewing factory. Usually when it's a, you know, an Asian factory that's making, let's say, Nike t-shirts, that whole factory just cuts t-shirts. It doesn't cut sweatshirts, it doesn't cut shoes, it doesn't cut pants or running shorts, it just cuts t-shirts, which means they cut a lot more fabric, 
but they're doing the same fabric all day long. We make wax cotton hats. Cutting wax cotton is significantly different than wool hats. But it's all done with this machine. It's all done with this machine and the software. And then I'm going to pull a piece out. So now I have a block. And this is the right back of a size seven and a half. Okay. So that's the piece. And that's that's how it cut it. And it's got, if you look really closely, it's got two lineup notches on the bottom. That's actually done with the software. And the cutting puts that a little as low. You can see it may be better that way. How many times will you run this throughout the day? Or for how many hours You're does it go? Running come? pretty much all the time, um, all day long. We, right now we're at, it's an odd part of the season. We're keeping up with hat demand, but we're also building next year's salesman samples. So they'll be cutting two layers of fabric or one layer of fabric, just getting enough 16 hats of a new color. So the salesmen each get one, and then they get to go sell next winter. Okay. And so, um, so that, so, and you can see what's going on here. It's just continuing to cut. And I think here. So now let's let's find out what happens once we've made the cuts and you have your flaps. I think we're ready to check out the next stage. We have to take another break, but okay. we'll walk over to the next stage and figure out where those seven and a half flaps have to go. Perfect. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Sounds good. We'll be right back, you guys.